I think it has its role in society. So society is created by a bunch of me's. It is the me in, in large, basically. So the me is able to function in that because it is created by the construct of a false self. So it's feeding off of each other. It reflects each other. So in that way, it's needed. But beyond that, it's not needed. Beyond that, I think the organism in its so-called natural way of being. Um, so I can say in a way, the, the, this comes first, but I would not say that's selfishness anymore. It's just the natural movement of a living organism like a dog. It will fend for itself, but there isn't the added layer of dominating other people in order to make me feel better, more worthy, or putting myself down to feel secure and feel like there's an authority there that I could feel safe with. You know, there are these dynamics that can happen with the identity. So that's the convoluted part where it gets really complicated. But the, the natural way this body functions, um, like I can't say this for sure because I think it does also vary, but at least what I observe here and with, you know, most of the people I've talked to is like, they're at rest. And then the body just functions. It does what it needs to survive. You know, it pays the bills, works. Um, it, it still wants connection. It doesn't feel good when it's totally isolated. Sometimes that's necessary. Sometimes it's okay. Like that happened here, a lot of solitude. But I think it, in a larger picture, like we're social animals as well. And it's just nice to have some sort of bond in that way. So it's like the basics, you know, you go back to the basics and it becomes simple. And um, so one of the fun things about this, as, as the personal stuff, in a way is processed and released. Um, then there can be a subtle fun in observing humans and how the world functions and um, and a lot of the a lot of a lot of the stuff I used to read makes a lot of sense. You know, you're kind of in the world, but not of the world. I think that's the same. You're kind of just the witness and the observer, but now there, it's not someone being the witness or observer. It's just this, it can happen. And there is no position to it. But when a spiritual seeker hears that, it will identify as the witness, as the observer, take a position, and then it becomes more complicated. Um, that's innocently, like it can't help but do that with everything basically. But here without itself, there is just this observing of the absolute beauty and chaos of everything. And you're untouched because you're not there. You're empty. Hi, Casper. Hey, Suzanne. How are you? I'm doing all right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's nice to be here. 
Yeah. And I would like to say that uh, I find it very uh, courageous. Of um, they they speak so openly about what they're going through, and um, yeah, I recognize a lot of it in myself also. Um, so yeah, what to say? Yeah, we're all can, so similar. Yeah, <laughs> in a way, it seems like that. Like, eh? Different but similar. Yeah. Um, so but I, I, it's like the, the the struggle I for myself I notice. I, I I feel like I make it so unnecessarily complicated, and this is sometimes also with the um, you know the speakers of non duality, it it helps in a way. But on the other, uh, some other times I notice like there's not really something to hold on to. I don't know how to deal with my own thoughts. Uh, so, yeah. say. so sometimes I would just, you know, yeah, like all kind of different. And then I, <laughs> I just hope to find what's most, you know, effective. And, and like, in, like ultimately, it's just I, I would like to, like I guess, like everybody else, like experience harmony. So, there, I, I mean, there are some. <laughs> it's um. So the the mind is very very complex and tricky, mm -hmm. and it will. Yeah. So there there are different things I can say, but um. So, in a way, it will always be like that. So the thoughts are never really the problem. There is no problem, honestly. But <laughs> it's the, the thoughts are just like that for everyone, pretty much. Unless you're an anomaly. But I would say pretty much the thoughts, you know, are kind of crazy. And they say anything and everything. And when when you're identified with them, if you believe that they are you, that's where a lot more of the complexity can come from. So they're just arising from nowhere. They don't say anything about you. They're just a tool. It's just, it's just a way, one way of the body functioning. So the body has these sensations and these thoughts. And I think what you're doing is good. You're kind of coming back into the body rather than only being in the head, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it will always come down to what feels most true because there will never be a right answer in a way. So it will always come down to the feeling first. And the, I think the more that you can do that, the better off you'll be. Because then it's your intuition guiding you more than the thoughts. Then it's the resonance guiding you more than the thoughts. And this isn't like, it takes practice in the beginning because when there's too much energy up here, it might take time to consciously bring it down. So it might feel like you're doing that, like that practice, if it might feel like, yeah, you're doing that, but really no one is doing that. It's it, by hearing something like this, perhaps it's just implemented or not. Yeah. Yeah, it, kind of, it, it, it does make sense. Uh, and and I, I like what you said. And, and like for me, I noticed there are different kind of, I don't know how to say, coping mechani mechanisms or like ways I'm dealing with it. It's like, like for example, saying like, oh, the mind is just thought itself. And then the thought doesn't really stick in a way and there becomes more like openness. 
or um, uh, yesterday I remember I said to myself like okay don't focus on thinking but on the, the state of being like uh, be, be behind it or something like that because the, the thoughts come from the, the like the emotional state or the state of being so it's, it's like all kinds of ways I'm I'm talking to my uh, to myself then um, yeah that it sounds, sounds it sounds so familiar. Familiar. <laughs> uh? it sounds familiar <laughs> yeah it sounds so problematic and in a way it is and the, the, the strange thing is um also with like like I don't want to blame you of course but like sayings I've, I've heard things like oh everything is perfect or you know like whatever then I can keep also like justifying to be in this kind of loop uh, thing like oh you know what's the matter it's like it's all supposed to happen anyway or it's just like intuitively you also know you also mentioned the word intuition like I know that this is probably not what is pointed to or what is meant but in a way because some things are so like resolute yeah I mean I think that is part of the uh just a normal struggle in, in life because it's hard to uncover for yourself what feels most true for you. So what you're doing is kind of experimenting and seeing what feels right. And it's gonna be uncomfortable. It's gonna lead you down a windy road where you kind of figure out for yourself what feels true. So it's not gonna, your body is taking information with everything that you try, basically. So it's telling you what feels right, what doesn't on a subconscious level. Mm -hmm. And like looking back, everything that was tried here, which was I mean, basically since the time we were the time the contraction came here, we were seeking, but largely I was on an intense kind of spiritual path, you know, for like nine years. So everything that I tried gave the body information. It either learned something and then it either said, this still isn't it. It tried to love itself. And then it no. saw that maybe that's not possible in the way that I think it is. Mm -hmm. I tried uh, accepting myself. So it always kind of balanced out in, in the sense that I tried the extreme, then I went to the other extreme. Yeah. And yeah, it was never linear. It was kind of, okay. kind of, yeah, chaotic, but like, there was fun in it too. <laughs> That's nice. I mean, here too, you know, it's like, I don't want to, you know, make it sound too dramatical. I mean, although I had had moments where I was like, I don't know who, who said it, but I also felt like, what's, what's the point of all this? You know, like, why, you know, why go through all of this? And then the funny thing is also like, then then, yeah, when we see the animals like some doc documentary or just in nature, and we see the, like the complete simplicity of, of of the animals, and just like they don't have all this kind of weird mental, you know, stagnation and all these things that you're they. So yeah, and then and like what you also just said, like to figure out what's right for you. This is like, this sounds like a very com common sense uh, thing, a very right uh, thing. And I, I, I mean, I, I will use that also. And, um, but like before, because of the, the, um, yeah, the resoluteness of certain sayings, like there was no, how to say, um, you can almost lose uh, like a, uh, the common sense in a way. So, a very common sense thing you just said like oh follow what's right 
it's like yeah yeah of course you know like that's that sounds good and i also made a note for myself like yeah i try to follow what feels intrinsically right or yeah yeah but what feels like intrinsically resonates but still i notice even when i say it now that it can like be overruled by just another saying i heard somewhere and then it's like <laughs> so i cannot even so this is the thing it's, it's still kind of uh swingy how to say like um yeah well i can totally relate to everything you said and <laughs> high five yeah. It's not, it's not an easy thing. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. But yeah, because overall, like, so I can say things like, yeah, follow your intuition. It's easy to say those words, but um, in the end, it's just words. So yeah. I'm not telling you to stick to anything that I say. So likewise, anything that you've heard before, it, it can be used for a time, but they're never really telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. So it's okay if you drop them as well, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't have to stick to one thing, but, um, but yeah, if we stick to a concept like intuition, it grows over time. So all the struggle that you're going through, you're still, your body is still picking up information and it's learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it won't become a thought process. Right. So yeah. you, might, you might then come to a point where it's like, this doesn't even make logical sense. Right. But this just feels right. Hmm. That's beautiful. It sounds. Yeah, it, it does re resonate something. Yeah. And I can also say that I've made just as much mistakes in my life as I did so-called, you know, I don't know, successes or whatever. Like the failures in a way were just as important. So you learn the you learn a lot from mistakes from going the wrong way when you when you're unsure, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But still it seems like you know, like, um, you know, in, in life with yeah, with the practical things, we don't make our car extra heavy, and then it's you know, or you know, like, almost like sabotage uh, the uh, practical things. But within myself, I kind of, it kind of feels that I've been doing that. You know, like, kind of, like uh, what I said also the other time, like. With cynicism and so it feels like in a way unnatural to me and but, but still i do it uh, to myself like this and then like what you say like it's not so much about the words and the whole thinking process and so this is also like a, a good guiding you know to be honest i think like um Yeah, there's so many, so many different ways that I can ex address that kind of stuff. But how, how it's seen here is like, it's all so perfect. <laughs> I don't that word, but like every, every like thing that was done to so-called, that would have been labeled as self-sabotaging myself for like, I don't know. All I can see is perfection in it. 
because it's kind of like it's so in a way normal that the human body would do that the identity would do that not the human body but the identity it's so convoluted like even here I would I would kind of know the reason why I put myself in harmful situations I would know exactly why and yet it still happened and it was it was only when I really learned that these energies are in the body. This is a learned habit in the body. Only when I really saw it in that way, rather than like only a psychological understanding of myself, only then could, could it be Yeah, words are so tricky, but like integrated, like really felt through and released. Yeah. Because it's all just stuck energy. It's all just in the body. Yeah. And so it's operating from that place. The conscious level is operating from whatever energy is there. And then it can't go underneath that. Not so much. So always, this will be the riding factor. This will be in charge in a way. So until this energy is met with love and acceptance and just, just it's innocent. It's just, you see it for the beauty and then perhaps it releases only then can you can you function from a level without that programming, without that unconscious energetic pattern. So this is why it's so innocent. It's not you. It's just energy in the body. Mm -hmm. So then your thoughts will actually change, potentially. Yeah, because of course I do want to, um, you know, like feel naturally and uh, think harmonious thoughts and you know think thoughts which are. That's not uh, possible, Casper. <laughs> <Thoughts, laughs> okay. Those thoughts will always be negative and positive, and it doesn't have anything to do with you. You can't really control the thoughts. Like I'm not saying don't attempt to. It's okay if you want to replace it with positive and stuff. But I'm saying on an ultimate level, the thoughts are arising on their own. And they're a mixture of everything. They're, in, they're coming from your whole environment. And your whole environment is never just positive or good. No, it's true. Yeah. Okay, I'll be just... Uh continue this ma <laughs> magical journey of life so uh yeah yeah well thank you yeah, thanks a lot it's thanks for sharing Cass. thank you